Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eddie Singer, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'd love to get started. We're going to be talking about uh, advancing from Tableau Extracts to Live Connect and how to do that uh, over Hadoop. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to mention that we're going to be exhibiting at the Tableau Conference next week in Austin, Texas. So if any of you are going to be there, please stop by and say hi. We'll have special t-shirts for anybody who attended uh, today. So here is what uh, I'd like to cover today. We'll talk about data extract versus live connect, some of the trade-offs between those two technologies. We'll zoom in on live connect and especially the performance challenges um, of using live connect in a Hadoop environment. We'll do a quick demo showing Tableau running live uh, on a large data set of about 3 billion rows. And then we'll go into Jetro technology. We'll explain how Jetro accelerates live connect, uh, Tableau live connect over large data sets in Hadoop and some of the common use cases that we see in the market. Uh, let me just start with the who I am. Again, my name is Ellie Singer. I'm the CEO of Jetro Data. We are New York City based, and I've been working with uh, data technologies for way longer than I would like to admit. Uh, Jetro is a technology vendor in this space. <clears throat> we develop a technology that accelerates BI on big data. This is the only use case that we are focused on. So the general technology is really optimized for BI, anything under BI, reporting, dashboards, discovery, ad hoc. Uh, but Jetro is not really focused on doing everything analytics. Uh, BI is our space. And technically, you can think of Jetro uh, as an acceleration server, essentially an indexing and caching server that sits between your Tableau and your Hadoop data set. And what we did in Jetro technology-wise is we actually took two different technologies and put them into one product. On the one hand, we took columnar SQL database, similar to what you would find in a Teradata or Vertica or Impala. And on the other hand, we took search indexing, similar to what you would find in Elasticsearch or uh, Solar or Lucene, put them into one product. So Jetro looks and behaves like any other SQL database, but on the inside, it has all the speed and performance capabilities of an indexing engine, full indexing engine. So let's dive right into it. Let's talk about Tableau Data Extract. Uh, the concept is very simple. <clears throat> we use Tableau to extract selective or aggregated data from any data source. Tableau would then convert it into a proprietary format known as TDE, which essentially converts it to a columnar, uh, compressed, highly optimized data format that Tableau then loads into memory, uh, either desktop or server. And once it's loaded to memory, that's how users <clears throat> interact with the data. The main motivation to use data extract by far is speed, because once the data is loaded, interaction is very fast. We're talking about subset interaction. And the second reason we see quite often is stability. Uh, you extract the data, you go into your own system, you don't need to worry about <clears throat> what happens to the data source, is anything changing there, any activity there that may slow you down. Um, it's a standalone type solution. Uh, the trade-off, the drawbacks, are several. First and foremost is size. Once the data extract becomes pretty large, because you have many rows or many columns or high cardinality columns, it then becomes impractical to turn it into a TD that can be loaded into memory. Uh, another limitation is freshness. <clears throat> you always have to wait until the data is being extracted and loaded into Tableau before you can access it. Uh, and lastly, there's the complexity of managing all those TDEs uh, across many users. Uh, sometimes they need to be refreshed on an ongoing basis, and that becomes a fairly uh, complex operational process. So if those limitations are an issue and something that prevents you from getting your application uh, requirements met, what people do is go to Live Connect, the alternative. And what we do here is instead of bringing the data into Tableau, Tableau would push the queries out to the data source. So the data stays within the data source. Every user interaction with the Tableau application will result in many queries, many SQL queries being sent from Tableau to the data source database. And then the database on the other side gets those queries, does the filtering, the aggregations, and send the results back to Tableau. Now, the reasons to use Live Connect is pretty much the opposite of the reasons not to use TDE. 
Uh, first of all, size. You no longer have the size limitation of Tableau's in-memory engine. You can work on extremely large data sets. You can work at any granularity level that you need. Freshness. <clears throat> you can access data within minutes of its arrival. You don't have to extract it and then load it <coughs> into Tableau. And lastly, simplicity. There's no longer the need to manage all those TD main things. But like anything else, Live Connect has its drawback and its trade-off. And here, the main one is performance. We now no longer work with in-memory Tableau database that works at a sub-second performance. Now we have to wait for a far database to get query results to us. And oftentimes, that is very slow. Now, the concept of Live Connect is not a new concept. It's been around for quite some time. But for the longest time, on the other side of this Live Connect were fairly optimized EDW appliances, Teradata, Zakiza, Exadata, Vertica, and so on. What's happening now is that we are swapping out these appliances uh, for a new platform for Hadoop. And Hadoop, uh, for all the great things it has, also has its own limitations and its own trade-off. What you get with Hadoop is much greater scale and much lower cost for the same storage requirements. But what you pay with is performance. Now, this may not show or be as limiting when you do less interactive workloads, your ETLs, predictive analytics, machine learning, reporting, uh, AI. Things of that nature can work quite well with uh, any of the SQL and Hadoop engines. The challenge is when you try to hook up Tableau to Hadoop. And although technically it works, the performance, the trade of Hadoop becomes very clear. The queries would be much, much slower. Now, what is the reason for that? Why is that the Hadoop performance uh, is so slow and not sufficient for BI. And the reason for that is the architecture of the SQL and Hadoop engines that you would find in a Hadoop environment. Anywhere from Hive to Impala to Presto, Spark SQL, Drill, Hawk, Big SQL, Lactian, I probably left a few of them out. <clears throat> All of those tools architecturally are identical. They might have different features and different nuances, but from an architecture perspective, they all work the same. They are all MPP full scan engines. Now, here is the problem of this architecture. Let's use this analogy. Think of a huge library that has many billions of books. And we organize those books into hundreds or thousands of recs. And we even have librarians. Each librarian would have their own rec. And now somebody walks into this library and asks for the list of books by Stephen King. And what would happen is that each librarian will go to their rec and pull out book by book by book to check if it's authored by Stephen King. That it was known as full scan architecture. Obviously, for selective applications, selective queries like we're seeing in BI, that's a very expensive process. Uh, for other workloads like machine learning or predictive analytics, when you have to go through all the data anyway, it's not a big deal. But when your queries are very selective, it's extremely costly and slow. In contrast, Jetra took a different approach. Instead of being full scan, we are full indexed. We take all the attributes, all the columns of the table, and we index each and every one of them. And when we get the same query, it's much easier process. We go to the index for column author. We go to the entry for Stephen King. And we'd have a list of the books we need to, to get, books one, two, three, four, five. We just go and fetch those books and can respond quickly to the query. That's the main reason why Jetra is optimized for the BI use case. Now, here is what uh, the system looks like. We have Tableau on top, and Tableau would use Live Connect and send queries to Jetro via ODBC. So again, every time the user interacts with the screen, a bunch of queries are being sent to Jetro. When Jetro receives those queries, it will use a range of features to speed them up. Now, we already mentioned the full indexing, Jetro also have a query result reuse, and Jetro also builds its own micro auto queues. So a range of features to speed up those queries. Now all the data that Jetro is using is stored in Hadoop. The data never leaves Hadoop, or in some cases, cloud storage, same idea. Everything is also incrementally updated. So once an hour, or once a day, or once every two minutes, if new data comes in, Jetro can incrementally update its cache and cubes and so on to allow immediate access. 
We built uh, a live demo, uh, which is publicly available. You can uh, openly go to tableau.jetrodata.com. You log in with user demo, and the password is also demo. Uh, choose Jetro, and you can interact with the dashboard uh, that I'm showing here on the right. And the data behind it is based on TPCDS data. It's uh, an open source benchmark that is widely used in our industry. The original data set is about one terabyte. The fact table has 2.9 billion rows, and there's about seven dimensions. So I'm going to go there now, click on this link, tableau.jetrelated.com, <clears throat> log in with user demo, and the password is the same, demo. Uh, choose Jethro, dashboard, and hopefully it will come up. The live demo curse has not hit us, hit us yet. And what you can see here is a typical Tableau dashboard. There's uh, five, six different charts. Um, again, each one of those charts would result in a handful of queries, uh, mostly with our joints because we have a fact in seven dimensions. You can see on the top left that currently <clears throat> this dashboard is working on 2.9 billion rows. And what I'll do is start drilling down. Uh, let's say I'm going to focus on a specific year, like year 2000. Uh, choose a few states that I want to zoom in on. Uh, maybe a few of the, the product categories that I want to uh, to look into. Um, and maybe users with a green credit rating. And at this point, as you can see here on the top left, we are down to about 3 million rows. So out of the 3 billion rows, we're only accessing 3 million rows. That's one-tenth of 1% 1 of the data. So obviously, when you're looking for something so narrow, having an index telling you exactly where you find it is the most efficient way to get this data. Uh, and if I continue drilling down, it will get even faster and faster. Uh, again, this is uh, publicly available. You can try it uh, on your own and try to not torture it too much. Here is the summary of what we see with this um, live demo, live benchmark. Uh, Jetro queries average about five seconds. Um, the deeper you go, typically the faster it gets. When we compare it to some of the SQL and Hadoop tools you can find in the market, they are averaging about 92 seconds per refresh. Every time you click on a, on a filter, it will take about a minute and a half for it to come back. It's actually even worse because as you drill down, you add more and more filters. In Jetro's case, it's becoming faster. But in the other SQL and Hadoop tools, the MPT full scan ones, it's actually slower and slower because every filter is another column you now have to scan that you didn't have to do before. So let me talk about the, the range of queries and how Jetro can handle a full range of BI query. The first type of queries that we see is what we call the highly filtered queries. So in the example here on the left, I have a query that's resulted or result of multiple filters. We filter by product category, and customer marital status, and the date, uh, and the state, and so on. So these queries are very filtered. And in this case, indexes really work great, because we have a direct pointer to all the rows we need. And we just go and fetch those rows. <clears throat> That's how we can get um, very fast response time for filtered queries. But we also have the other extreme. When you just start a dashboard, there's no filter at all. When you just start with zero filters, Jetro has to go and essentially full scan the entire 2.9 billion rows. Now, these queries are obviously as expensive in Jetro as they are in other tools. There's no index to rely on. But here we use a different feature in Jetro, how the query result reuse. So we run this query once, but after we run it for the first time, we don't have to worry about it again. Every time this query is repeated, Jetro will fetch the results that it already stored and serve it directly. So if I go back to our demo, and I hit revert to go back to the top, you'll see that the response is again instantaneous. This, by the way, still went live to Jetro. This is not coming out of Tableau cache. This is all live. But those queries were already <clears throat> cached, and that's why it's instantaneous. The third type of queries are the ones that in between. They have perhaps one or two filters. <clears throat> by having a couple of filters, they are not very repeatable. There's still some variance to them. It might take 
several hundred permutations to catch all the different uh, uh, versions of the filter values you can use. And also because it's fairly low cardinality, you only have, say, 100 values or so, it doesn't filter a lot of the data out. It might still filter a significant amount of data, but not very, very high filtering. So these are the, what we call the in-between queries. And for that, we use Jetro's Ultra Micro Cubes. We essentially auto-generate very small size cubes. And once we do that, we can serve all permutations of those queries without having to go and actually access the data. We already have the results pre-computed. So I'll now dive into each one of those and explain how they work. Let me start with index access. So we have the, the table, it's fully indexed, and all the data and the indexes, everything is already on your Hadoop cluster. Now Jetro itself <clears throat> runs as an edge node. You do not need to install Jetro on your Hadoop cluster. And when Jetro gets a query, summarize sales for product books, what we do is we go directly to HDFS. We don't use uh, MapReduce or Spark or anything else. We work directly with the data in HDFS. We'll start with the where clause, product equal books. We're going to go to the index file for column product. We're going to go to the entry for books, get the list of row IDs that have that value. Then we're going to go back to Hadoop. And now we're going to fetch the sales data, but only for the rows that have product book. We don't have to go and scan all the rows in the data set to figure out which one have books. We already know which ones have that value. Do the aggregation and go back to the user. So the importance of this architecture is that, let's say a query touches a million rows, and it takes two seconds to run that query. It could take the same two seconds if the data set has a billion, or five billion, or 10 billion rows, because Jetro only pays the price for accessing the rows it actually needs. So the time it takes to run a query depends on the working set size, the rows needed for this query, not the data set size, the overall rows you have in the data set. The next feature I'll talk about is our query result cache. We talked about those queries that don't really have a lot of filtering. So let's see how that works. Let's say we have this um, table, sales transactions. We have uh, the date of the transaction, a lot of other dimensions like customer ID and product ID and the sale price and so on. And now somebody runs a query, uh, summarize sales from transactions where year equals 2016. So Jet will go to the index for date, find all the rows that have 2016 and summarize the sale value and respond to the user. In this case, let's say it was a 1643. Then what Jetro does, it takes this query and the result set and stores it into Hadoop, shared storage in Hadoop. Now, every time the same exact query will be repeated, any, anybody else who asks for some sales for year equals 2016 will immediately get the response of 1643. We don't have to go and recalculate it. Now, here is the scenario. What happens when new data is added? Let's say once a day you add data, and now we added data for October 1st, 2016, and the same query is repeated. So what Jetro will do is get a query, realize new data was added. So Jetro will take this query and run it on the incremental portion of the data, only on October 10th data. We'll get the value there, the value is seven. We'll merge it with the saved value we have from before, 1643, and now the new result is 1650. That's what Jetro is going to update its cache with, and that's response that goes back to the user. So once we ran one of those queries that took perhaps a long time to run, and we cache the results out of that, we don't lose it. It's continuously being used, even as new data is being added, because Jetro can incrementally update those cache results. Uh, and lastly, we're going to talk about auto microcubes and how that works. So here is uh, the scenario, a similar table as before. We also have a column of state, the location of where the purchase happened. And now the query that Jetro receives is summarize sales where state equals Arizona. Same idea, we'll go to the index, find all the rows for state Arizona, summarize the sales number, and back to the user, say again, 1643 is our number. Now, once we reply to the user, Jetro has a background process completely on its own, self-maintained. 
Jetra would look at this query and ask itself, can I generate a cube aggregation of this query? And the way it does that is by taking the filter column and moving it into the group by. So Jetra would create an internal query, select some cells, group by state. So we don't have a filter, but we now we turn the filter into a group by column. And that would generate a very small result set. In this case, we'll have about 50 rows. Uh, for each state, we'll have the total cells of that state. Now, when we receive the original query, but not the exact version, but rather different filters, maybe with state uh, Alaska, or maybe with state in California or New York, whatever permutation of this filter from now on, we'll just go to this small aggregation and be able to calculate the results from that without having to go into the original data set. Now, this technology, uh, the automicrocubes of Jethro, is fairly different than what, than what you might know from other all of cubes technology. Uh, the main difference is, first of all, this is fully auto-generated. There is no need for you to ever go and decide which cubes you need to create. Jetro monitors the system activity, and based on actual user usage, it will create those cubes. Second big limitation, big difference is size. Jetro only creates micro cubes. We only create very small cubes. If a cube is going to be too big, or the requirement will be for a large cube, Jetro will actually not create that cube. We will use instead indexes, and I'll explain how. Next, just like the query result cache, cubes are also incrementally updated. Once we built a cube, new data was added, the cube query uh, is uh, run again, we'll rerun that cube on the incremental portion of the data and then merge it with the old results. Uh, and lastly, we support very complex uh, cube or aggregation and expression functionality. You can use case and when and different function. We even support distinct and count distinct within our cubes. So this technology is really fairly wide. I can catch a huge range of queries. But the important thing is that it's not the only acceleration tool. It works very closely with our indexing technology. And the interesting part here is the trade-off between one versus the other. Cubes are usually inefficient when they become very big. Uh, the cube can be sometimes larger than the original data set. And what makes cubes big are either multiple columns when you have many filters. So you don't filter only by state, you also filter by time and by category and whatever else. Or you have very high cardinality columns as part of your cube filtering. In both cases, indexes will work great. If you have a lot of filters, we already know that indexes will actually filter it down very significantly. And same is true for very high cardinality columns. If you're looking for a specific value out of millions of values, it's already going to be a very small subset of the data. So cubes are being used for cubes are good for, and where cubes are not very good for, indexes really fit the bill. So between cubes, caching results, and indexes, we can serve the full range of queries that we can get from Tableau, and these features complement each other. Each one is doing what it's good at. A few other things to talk about in Jethro. Uh, it was designed and built for concurrency and scale. Um, so we can have multiple Jethro servers. As you have more and more users, more concurrency, you can just add those Jethro servers on the fly. All Jetro servers are stateless. They don't have any local data. All the data is shared centrally in Hadoop. Uh, <clears throat> when a query comes from server A and it's being cached, the result is being cached, if the same query now goes to server B, again, it's immediately shared. There's no uh, any dependency on any specific server. And that model can scale out to thousands of concurrent users and as many applications as you might have. There's no architectural limitation for Jetro's scalability. Uh, here is what the system looks uh, overall. On top, we have the BI tools. This could be commercial BI tools or your custom visualization or SQL client. They talk to Jetro using ODBC or JDBC API. The Jetro servers are stateless uh, virtual machines. They typically run as an edge node to the Hadoop cluster. 
And then all the data is stored in a shared storage, either in Hadoop or in cloud storage. Uh, the process there is that you look at your data. Not all of the data you have in Hadoop is something that you would need to expose to your BI users. You find those BI-worthy data sets. <clears throat> you pass them on to Jetter for indexing. And once we index those data sets, we store them back in Hadoop. So that's really the, the overall process and what it takes to get Jetter running. Um, here is a list of what we typically see as customer use cases. Uh, there are several dozen implementations of Jetro already. Uh, we see them across different industries. There's no specific vertical interest that we found. What's common to all of our customers is that they use Hadoop and BI together. Um, mostly BI dashboards and mostly Click. About half of our customers are, I'm sorry, Tableau. Half of our customers are Tableau users and they typically use Jetflow with uh, their BI dashboards. The data sets that we typically see for BI uh, range from several hundred million to several billions, I would say on average about three to five billion rows. The largest, implement largest implementation of Jetflow has over a hundred billion rows in the fact table. Typically people uh, update the tables daily, several tens of millions of new rows per day. Uh, on the high-end side, we have customers that update the data every 15 minutes, so 96 times a day they add new data. And again, on the high-end, over a billion new rows per day. Jetro is typically measured for performance. People expect to see their Tableau dashboards come back in 10 seconds or less. Uh, for several dozen users or several hundred users or even thousand users. Um, most Jetro customers use multiple Jetro servers, four or five on average. We work with any Hadoop distribution uh, from Hortonworks, Cloudera, and then the Trunk Apache, MFR, EMR. Uh, and we also work with cloud storage like Amazon's EFS and S3. Uh, lastly, Jetro is really complement, compatible and complements the native Hadoop uh, SQL tools. So no Jetro customer is getting rid of their, their Hive or Impala or Presto. They use them for their more advanced analytics, more predictive analytics. They use Jetro for their BI. But oftentimes what we see is people compare Jetro to a Teradata or Netiza or Vertica or Redshift. And they're looking to see if Jetro can give them the same performance they're used to with their EDW, but on Hadoop instead. And oftentimes the response and the result is positive. So in summary, uh, the main reasons to use Jethro is consistently fast queries. We can speed up any type of BI query using the indexing, the caching, and the cube technology. You get data model flexibility. You can focus on the application need, not on the query tool limitations. And what I mean by that is you don't have to uh, use denormalization or predefined cube or do complex aggregation that would be small enough to fit with your requirements or have all of your queries use a specific partition key and so on. Uh, you can let the data model be what the application wanted to be and not worry about the performance of the underlying database. Uh, you can use full star schema uh, with Jetro, uh, support joins and optimize joins in many ways. Uh, thirdly, operational simplicity. Everything stays in Hadoop, in a shared Hadoop cluster. Everything is incrementally updated. Everything is self-maintained. You don't have to uh, go and increment the attitude your index and so on. It's just maintains it all by itself. It's built for scale, and it's compatible with different BI tools and different Hadoop platforms. And of course, lastly, it truly really serves the full range of BI use case. Your dashboards, exploration, ad hoc reporting, uh, customers of ours use it with internal users or external facing applications. Small data sets, large data sets, many users, few users, uh, really everything BI, everything Tableau uh, is Jetro. So that's the 30 minutes or so that I allocated for talking about Jetro. And what I'd like to do next is open it to our Q&A. OK, so I just want to screen share. Okay, one second.
All right, let me go into our Q&A. So the question is about um, Jetro uh, need for Hadoop, uh, Redshift, and so on. So the answer is, for Jetro, uh, Hadoop is a storage platform. Jetro does not require Hadoop. Uh, quite a few of our customers use Jetro with a, either a local file system or NFS system. On Amazon, people use Jetro with uh, EFS or S3. So Jetro does not require Hadoop or any specific EDW platform. Uh, we just need a storage layer to store, store the index data. Uh, another question I see is about Uh, Jetro's uh, ingestion process and how to get data indexed by Jetro. And the answer here is that, uh, again, you would use Jetro selectively. Not all of the data that you have in your big data platform requires to have Jetro acceleration. You would use Jetro only with those data that you want to uh, expose to BI users. The process goes um, uh, through a one-time uh, step of reading the data from its current platform, be it Hadoop or EDW, we read it out into Jethro, we then index it and create a fully uh, standalone version of that data set that's fully indexed. So you can think of Jethro as replicating your BI data set into Jethro's format. We then store it again in Hadoop or any other storage platform. And from that moment on, Jethro would be used, uh, would use only its version of the data set. Now, once we do this initial extract or import of data, we can then do it incrementally. So use your ETL process, uh, again, once a day, once an hour, pass along to Jetro the new rows that were added to the fact table. Jetro will pick up this new incremental data, do its indexing, uh, update its cubes and caching, and so on. Uh, so that's a fairly simple process to follow. Uh, quite a few of our customers use different ETL platforms to do that. It's essentially adding one step to your ETL process to um, index data by Jethro. Um, let me see. Uh, another question we have is about Jethro performance comparison to um, uh, tools like uh, Impala or Spark SQL and so on. Uh, and the answer here again is that uh, depending on the use case, you would find different performance uh, characteristics. Jethro is optimized for BI, and it's optimized for very selective queries. So if you think of a, an extreme scenario, let's say you have a data, data set of 10 billion rows, and your query is looking for one specific row, then obviously indexes will be very fast, will probably take less than a second to do. If you have to find this row by scanning the entire data set, then you'll have to probably spend a long time doing that. So the more selective the queries are, the faster indexes perform. And that's what we're seeing with BI. Uh, people very quickly drill down into small sets of the data, and that's how uh, indexing technology like Jetro's performs so much better than the other tools. Uh, the reverse is also true. When you want to run uh, a very large predictive analytics uh, process, you want to train your model across the entire historical data set, Jet will not have any advantage over those other tools, it might even be slower than that. Let's see. Uh, I have a question about compatibility. Uh, Jetro can work with different BI tools and with different uh, storage platforms, as we said. Uh, we work with both ODBC and JDBC, uh, we've seen Jetro being used with uh, obviously Tableau, Click, uh, business objects, MicroStrategy, and, and so on. Uh, but at least half of our customers are Tableau-centric. So I would say that Jetro is highly optimized for Tableau. There are many optimization features in Jetro that merk Tableau queries or that are optimized for the queries Tableau typically generate. Um, Jet would be more, more efficient with. And um, 
I see one more query about Jetro indexing and do we need to have uh, a lot of memory for it? So let me explain uh, something about Jetro indexing technology. Uh, as I said, Jetro indexes every single column. Uh, all the indexes are stored in Hadoop. And each of those column indexes have multi-level indexes. We have an index of an index. So when you're looking for an um, author named Stephen King, Jetro does not have to go and scan the entire index. The index of the index will tell us exactly where to find these entries for Stephen King, what offset it is within the index file, and we go directly and get that value. So Jetro does not need to load all the data or all the indexes to memory. We get our speed uh, through the cubes and through the indexing, not through uh, loading stuff to memory. And I don't see any other questions. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Uh, and again, if any of you are going to be at the conference next week, at the Tableau conference, please stop by and say hi. Thanks and have a great rest of the day.